uh, let us have a look um, on our slide which shows that which type of ecosystem is present in which area. The major ecosystems in Pakistan. Pakistan has a variety of climate and variety of seasons. We have these main ecosystems. The temperate deciduous forests which are present in Shugra and Neelam Valley, the very beautiful green forests uh, in which the um, plants shed their leaves and their leaves changes color in a specific season. Khazame jase paton ke rang jahe wo change ho jate hain. They look so beautiful and then they shed their leaves and change their leaves in spring again. These are present in Shugra and Neelam Valley. The coniferous alpine and boreal forests, these are comparatively colder forests. These are present in Kagan, in the Malam Jabba and Sawat, in Deer and in Chilas areas. Then the grassland ecosystems, these are present in Gilgit, in Kashmir, Viziristan, in Chitral, Kalat. We have um, uh, rich grasslands. We have um, some very important and uh, very huge deserts. We have deserts in Miawali, in Bhakkar, in Bahawal Nagar, Bahawalpur, and uh, many more areas. We have three important deserts called Thal, Thar, and Cholistan. Thal, which is present in uh, on the uh, Miawali, Bhakkar side, Thar, which is uh, present in the Sindh, the province of Sindh and uh, the Cholistan, which is uh, the desert near Bahawalpur. Then we also have the tundra, the ecosystem which is present on the tops of the mountains, very, very cold, extremely cold, have freezing temperatures. These are present in, the, in Pakistan, in the mountains of Karakoram and the Hindu Kush. So it means that Pakistan is rich in ecosystems, in their types and in biodiversity because we have almost all types of climates and we have almost all types of the weathers, the seasons. Now we briefly talk about different types of terrestrial ecosystems and their properties. We talk about the temperate deciduous forests, for example. These are the forests which are present in Southeast Asia, in India, parts of North America, China, Japan and Pakistan. These are the um, areas which are the areas of moderate temperature. Temperature is usually from 4 to 30 degrees centigrade, a temperature that is good and supportive for life. The rainfall is also good. It is from 750 to 1500 millimeters annually. It's a good rainfall. Different types of plants grow in this area. We call them mostly deciduous plants. The plants which shed their leaves in fall. There are plants which are um, called Texas, Pinus, Berberis, different types of ferns, grasses, herbaceous plants. There is a wide diversity of plants present in this uh, particular climate. There are a lot many animals present. Um, in Pakistan particularly, we have rhesus monkeys, we have leopards, we have black bears present in those areas. We have different types of birds which uh, inhabit those areas. The soil of these forests is very fertile and rich in nutrients because we have a lot much of biodiversity and we have a good temperature to support life. Soil is very fertile and rich. The human interference comes here. Humans collect firewood from this area, those people who are living there. Also, uh, some people cut wood for furniture or, or for use in buildings. Some people hunt animals. Animal hunting also have its effect and the wood cutting also have its effect on the ecosystem. Because if we cut wood and we do not replace it with uh, newer plants growing, then this may result in loss of habitat and then a lot many other organisms, for example, animals living on those trees will become homeless and they may die or they may migrate. If the animals are hunted, for example, if the carnivores are hunted, then um, all of those um, animals um, on which those carnivores were feeding will increase in number. When they increase in number, they may um, uh, kill more um, uh, small animals or maybe they eat upon all the grass of that uh, particular part of ecosystem. So the whole ecosystem get disturbed if, if some of its components are disturbed and human, uh, human interference uh, is particularly uh, the, I mean, uh, hunting animals and this is about cutting what. Um, we can manage it. If we replace, if we, if we are cutting a tree, 
we are planting five or ten trees, um, then we are balancing. If we are not doing it, we are going to destroy the ecosystem. The picture in front of you shows a temperate deciduous forest uh, in North America. Now we talk about the coniferous forests, the coniferous alpine and boreal forests. These are the forests which have lower temperature. Temperature is from freezing to 10 degrees centigrade. This is more hostile or uh, harsh for life. So specific life forms can exist. The plants which are living in an area in this type of uh, climate, in this type of forest are usually uh, evergreen plants. These plants have um, a specific type of leaves which are needle like and which are covered with a waxy surface. These leaves can survive in uh, these harsh environments. Um, these leaves actually help these um, plants to survive in these harsh environments and they do not shed their leaves. So we call them evergreen, always green. Pinus species grow here. They have uh, specific waxy needle like leaves to survive. Highly adaptive animal species can survive in there in these uh, ecosystems like Marco Polo sheep, bisons and wolves, black bears in Pakistan, in, in the coniferous alpine and boreal forests in Pakistan. Human disturbance is comparatively less because these areas are less accessible. These are um, on the tops of mountains and these are very cold, so usually human interference is less. Um, but again, the human interference is same as that of deciduous forest that is hunting and cutting the wood. Have a look on a picture of uh, a coniferous boreal forest. We can see uh, long coniferous trees. Then the grassland ecosystem. Charaga hai, kudrati charaga hai, the grasslands. These are present in Pakistan, in various areas, Chitral, Gilgit, uh, Kashmir. These are present in Eurasian countries in the world, in North America. There are two major types of the grasslands called prairies and savanna. Prairies are those grasslands in which woodless trees exist. Savanna are those grassland in which the woody trees, they exist. Australia, for example, is rich in prairies. And uh, this is the reason that Australia have a very good livestock. Pakistan is also uh, quite rich in these grasslands and this is the reason we also have a good livestock in those areas. The rainfall in these areas is about 250 to 750 millimeters annually. So what is the crucial factors? The plants and the organisms, the animals which survive in these, this type of ecosystem are those which can tolerate less quantities of water. Mostly the grasses grow there, the tall grasses, the short grasses, legumes, herbs, mosses, lichens. Though these ecosystems, they have um, a water sh shortage comparatively, but they do have a rich biodiversity because organisms which are living here are highly adaptive to this type of situation. There is also a rich animal biodiversity in these regions, which includes the reptiles, different types of lizards, amphibians, mammals. There are a lot many decomposers like fungi and bacteria present in these ecosystems. Human impact is important in this ecosystem because usually human use these uh, uh, for their livestock because uh, these are natural uh, areas where the animals can grow very well. Kudrati uh, chara um, we use them for, um, uh, for uh, our livestock, for feeding our livestock. We also use these um, areas for agriculture. This is very important that because water is a limiting factor and specific types of plants can grow in this area, if there is an overgrazing, for example, if we are, if there is a specific area in a grassland and we are uh, uh, keeping too many animals and they eat upon all the grass, or they are eating much more than the production of grass uh, naturally occurs, uh, then this may result in destruction of the ecosystem. Because grasses and these plants, the tall and short grasses and the legumes and herbs and mosses and other um, uh, plants, they grow comparatively um, slower because wa water is a limiting factor. If animals are too much and they eat upon all of these, then what will be remaining to eat? So this may result in destruction of the ecosystem and many times it happens. And then regrowing that ecosystem um, is again a long process. Because, um, uh, because of human interference, um, uh, these uh, ecosystems could be more easily disturbed in comparison to the forests, which are less accessible. Here you can see in the picture um, and uh, 
a grassland in China, which looks very rich in um, its grasses. Then comes the desert ecosystem. Pakistan have different deserts, Thar, Thal, Cholistan. In the world, there are a lot many different deserts. Desert in a, is an ecosystem which, is, which have a hot and dry climate. Rainfall is about 25 to 50 millimeters. There are perennial plants, there are cacti. The plants have specific properties because water is too short. Plants have specific types of leaves and stems which are succulent, which store water in themselves. The animals which live in these areas, the deserts, they adapt to specific mechanisms to overcome the shortage of water. For example, a very dilute urine or almost solid feces, solid nitrogenous waste. For example, the kangaroo rats, different types of reptiles and birds can survive this area. The human interference actually converts different areas into deserts. We call it desertification. The grasslands and the other ecosystems, if not many, for example, in a grassland, if we keep too much livestock, then they can eat upon all the grasses and ultimately that area could be converted into a desert. So deserts are, we say that in the world are increasing because the other areas are by human interference usually converting into deserts. We call it desertification. Uh, some plants in a desert area, we can see they have very thick leaves. These are normal cacti that we usually grow in our uh, lawns. Then tundra, very cold, snowy ecosystems. Uh, these are the ecosystem, for example, in Pakistan present on the tops of Hindu Kush and Karakram. They have small perennial flowers because temperature is too low. There is a snow cover. In this, these areas, in small perennial plants, mosquitoes grow very well. And birds are also present in um, quite larger quantities because they feed upon the uh, mosquitoes. There are white bears, there are foxes, there are snow or um, snow leopards, for example. Human interference is less. In this ecosystem, human interference can very easily destroy the whole ecosystem. But fortunately, these areas are not in excess of human beings. There are few people which can go in these areas and disturb them. So this is a fortunate uh, happening that these are not very accessible. Let's have a look on pictures, some pictures of tundra. You can see the top of tops of the mountains, a snow cover in the winters. We can see a yak, a specific animal. We can see it is covered fully with hairs from all sides. White bears also survive in this ecosystem. White bears also have lot much hairs and a thick layer of fat on their body, which protect them from cold. So this was about different types of ecosystems um, in the world and in Pakistan. Now have a look on some uh, pictures taken from um, different ecosystems in Pakistan. A very, very rich uh, diversified forest in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa area. Human interference, people visit there, enjoy the nature, but they spread these uh, dirty things. So human interference can disturb the ecosystems um, and this may result sometimes in destruction of uh, the ecosystem ultimately. You can see another effect of human interference. Monkeys which are present actually in lower areas, they come up towards mountains because human beings provide them food and this result in leopards coming behind these monkeys on the tops towards human places because these uh, leopards then because monkeys come up, they do not have food and they follow monkeys and they come up. You can see monkeys playing, but there is too much of dirt. Another uh, effect of human beings, black bear, which was present in um, quite uh, large numbers in um, these forests, but now this become extinct due to hunting because of its beautiful fur. People killed it and now it is, um, it is extinct. This is not present in, uh, in that particular area. You can see different trees. You can see uh, a tree which is called a snag. Actually, this is a tree which is actually destroyed due to lightning. Then this tree become um, uh, the habitat for different types of birds. So this was about the ecosystem, its biotic components, its abiotic components, and examples of different ecosystems of the world and of Pakistan.